Good day and welcome to our short video on the Dell 5440 laptop. That's a Dell Latitude 5440 corporate grade laptop. We're going to unbox this. We are going to do a basic disassembly. We're going to do an upgrade on it. We're going to replace the memory. We're going to replace the hard drive. We're also then going to perform a benchmark on it and we'll give you a full review as we go through. One of the things we're going to do is go over the features that are on this particular one and also what might be on the version you've got and why those features are important or are not. We're also going to have a related video that we'll put in the top right hand corner that explains how to load drivers onto a brand new hard disk uh, so that you can continue to load the operating system. And if you don't know what that means, well, you probably don't care. Uh, so that's why it's a separate video. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, there's nothing interesting on the box other than the description right here that tells you a little bit about it. It also comes with just a small 65 watt charger and it's the new one, it's the new small one, which is quite nice. Uh, a couple of things to note, one, it's USB-C. Uh, secondly, I'm in North America, so I'm got, I have the North American plug, but this is a universal adapter, so you'll get exactly the same thing in Japan or wherever else, just with a different plug. All right, before we get into the disassembly, let's go over and explain the ports that are on this. Uh, like all Dell laptops, this comes in a variety of configurations. There are features that are missing from this one that you might care about. First thing that's missing, the 8-in-1 card reader. Doesn't have it. Don't care. We don't need it. If your laptop is equipped with cellular access, that's where the SIM card goes. That's your SIM card slot right there. Two USB-C ports, but these aren't just USB-Cs. These are Thunderbolt ports, which if memory serves me correct, are 40 gigabit per second. Whereas USB 3 Gen 2 is 10 gigabit per second. So they're fast. Why do you care about that? Well, it means you can put a lot of things on them. For one, they take power in. For another, if you connect video onto these slots, these Thunderbolt slots, you can get up to four external screens, which is pretty cool. If you want to use the laptop screen, you can get up to three additional screens. This is a USB 3.2 generation one. That's an awful lot of spec. What does that mean? It means it's five gigabit per second. If it was a 3.2 generation two, it would be 10 gigabit per second, but it's a slower one. Does that make a difference? No. For what you're doing, for, pr for printers, for keyboards, for mice, for most stuff, doesn't make any difference at all. It's way overpowered. These Thunderbolts are what you're gonna you wanna use for anything that's got a lot of data transfer. Okay, enough of that. Next thing, has a really cool feature, this RJ45 slot. So I can plug an ethernet to it. That's really handy. You may not use it very often, but trust me, it comes in handy. Kensington lock slot, HDMI out for your video. And then there's another USB type A, which is the old, the old slot. Uh, 3.2 generation one and then there's a mini din slot just a headphone connector for the record i always have troubles with these things i find they often just don't work so i wouldn't rely on that too much other than that there's really nothing else that's too exciting here except that's your speaker slots so if you think what are those slots on the bottom yeah that they're your speakers right there okay that's your vents on the back here uh and you don't want to plug those because that's where the air is going in okay let's talk about the specs this particular unit is an Intel i5-1335U CPU. What does that mean? And why are there the other ones? Okay, let's go through it very briefly. i5, it's mid-generation uh, of the corporate line of CPUs. It's the one most people are going to settle on. 13, the first two numbers, means it's the 13th generation. That's the current generation for the fall of 2023, uh, which is what it is now. Then the next two numbers, the 35 and the U. That they're more or less random, those two numbers, uh, but basically the higher the number, the better the chip. Uh, the next step up in this is a third Intel i5-1345U. And the only actual, if you look at the quick specs, the only real difference is that the 45 runs just a little bit faster at 4.7 gigahertz versus 4.6. Basically, you're not gonna notice, even on a benchmark, it's irrelevant. So why did Intel make that chip and why does Dell actually put it in some of these? The 45, also comes with vPro. If you don't know what vPro is, you don't need it. If you do know what vPro is, you might want it. Basically, it's management uh, software. It's a way to manage these things remotely. Another CPU you could get in here ends with the letter P. That's the performance chip. Now, that should have a big bump, but I took a look at the spec, and when I benchmarked them, it didn't have a lot of difference in actual productivity. So 
might as well go with the U. It's a cheaper chip, that makes your battery last longer. So for me, that's what we settled on. This is using the Intel Iris XE video. Let's pull it apart and go over a few of the other specs. I'm gonna use a very small specialized screwdriver. You do not need to. A regular Phillips screwdriver will, will work fine. With old laptops, there was a pry point around the edge that you could just find a, a little slot you could put into uh, with your fingernail, but those days seem to be gone. So I just look for an area that's prop popped up and you can see this one in my case popped up. And if I need to get something more serious into it because my fingernails won't do it, let's get an old credit card and just run it along. There we go. Okay, what's in here? We have a three cell 54 watt battery. You used to be able to tell the quality of, and the strength of the battery by just looking at the number of cells and say this is a three cell, so it's got you know, a certain amount of power. Then there's four cells, that's gone. Now you have to look for the number. The number of cells doesn't tell you enough. This is a 54 watt hour battery. They sell exactly the same unit with a smaller battery, which is, I think it's a 44 watt hour battery. Speakers are here. That, believe it or not, is your solid state hard drive. That's your SSD. This is your Wi-Fi. These cables are your antennas. That is for your WAN, better known as cell connection. So if you, get, if you choose to put a cell card in here, you can then use the SIM card slot that we showed you a moment ago so that this thing can always be connected. Two memory slots. How much memory can you put in? Total of 64 gig. You can put a 32 in and a 32 in. In our case, we're going to upgrade it. We're gonna put another eight gig in. CPU fan, a lot of people think the CPU is under there because on a PC it is. It is not. That is your CPU. Well, actually under here is your CPU and this heat pipe carries the heat out to the fan, which in this case exhausts through the back here. Okay, let's get to upgrading it. Here I have an eight gig DDR4 SO DIMM, which is the smaller DIMMs that go into laptops and other small devices and uh, just put it, put it in on a 30 degree angle and slap it down and boom, done, upgraded. Not very hard. Next thing I've got here is a terabyte drive. This is a tiny 2230, it's 22 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And that's the only size of solid state disc that this unit will accept, which is a bit odd that they didn't put in, they didn't shift this somewhere and allow it to go to the standard 2280, the larger one. But uh, that's what's here. Now, how large of a SSD can you put in here? And when I say large, I'm talking about capacity. Two terabytes. This is a one terabyte. Uh, it shipped with a quarter terabyte, but from Dell, their upgrade costs are just exorbitant. So I just bought it separately. Uh, I think it was about 200 and change to buy a larger SSD. And when I say larger, I'm talking about more capacity. But I spent $67 Canadian on this TimeTech one. That's about $50 US. Very, very inexpensive. And I've been using TimeTech solid state drives now for, oh, a year or two, and I've yet to have a single problem with them. They work great. One last thing you might wanna know is, what speed is this? How fast can this go? This is PCIe Gen 4. There are two screws to remove. Remove the cover. Now this doesn't pop up. You have to just slide it back. There we go. So pull it out. What am I gonna do with that? I have no idea. It's not worth very much. This one's neat, this little TimeTech SSD even comes with a little metal heat dissipator. So the chips get hot and it spreads the heat out over the entire area. Anyway, let's pop it in. So again, it does not go into 30 degree, it goes in flat. Let's pop it in, slide it, put the cover back on. Best to have magnetic tip screwdriver. This one isn't. It's not a good idea, but I'm gonna do it because I assume you don't have one. Anybody can do this. You can upgrade your laptop by yourself. It is not hard. Pro tip, always go around again, squish everything down and screw it down again. Just make sure it's tight because these screws can and will come out this has a very nice keyboard. The keyboard is backlit. You gotta have a backlit keyboard, especially for corporate use. If you're flying on a plane, this is a big deal. So the keyboard's quite nice, it works great, no need to talk more about it. Here's what's wrong with this unit. And I say wrong as in just choices that I made when I bought it. 
Firstly, it doesn't have an infrared camera, just as a regular webcam. Is that a good quality webcam? Yeah, who cares? It doesn't have the infrared, which means I can't use Windows Hello. Why did I do that? Because this one was in stock and I needed it right away. The other feature that was missing is it's not a touch screen. I love touch screens. I don't use them all day long, but I wanna be able to just touch things when I need to do that. This doesn't have it, you can get it. Why didn't I buy it? Because it was an extra, I think, for $600 Canadian to get the screen with touch. It should be an extra 40 or 50, maybe $60. It's a complete burn. Okay, let's get to firing this thing up. Okay, so there's Windows 11, right? Well, there's still more stuff to do. Uh, first thing to do, uh, fix the silly menu. So right click and select taskbar, and for God's sakes, move it to the left so it doesn't bounce around on you. It's uh, just nutty the way they have it by default. Let's close that. Now right click on the start button and go to device manager and there's probably a whole bunch of stuff that's not, oh wow, only a couple things didn't get loaded, including the ethernet driver, hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's go to start, click on settings, and then go to all the way down to Windows Update, or you can just click it in Windows 11 in the top right corner here, which we're going to do. We'll select check for updates. And there's a couple of settings you want to change by default. First, click, well, scroll down and select advanced options. Select for other products for Microsoft, yes. Optional updates, we don't care about the preview, but there's usually drivers and other things in here. Oh, it's another preview. Okay, usually there's more stuff in here, but that's okay if there's not. Let's go back a step, let these finish, and you'll notice because this is a Dell, it's got recent uh, firmware on it. And let's go to Dell. You probably just wanna to go to dell.com, select support, select drivers and downloads. And you can type in your exact service tag at the bottom here, but that's a bit of a pain. Let's let it do it. So click download and install support assist. Something else to do is to change the screen resolution. I personally do not like how Microsoft bumps the screen resolution up 50% by default on these screens. So I click uh, right click and select display settings and change the scaling from 150%, at least in my case, down to 100%. There, I can see a lot more on the screen now. Now, because we're doing a video and we want this to be easy for you to see, we'll change it back to 100. But for most people with decent eyes, you're gonna probably wanna change that back to uh, 100%. And before we run any tests, it's important to go to Dell and get any updates they have. It found a few. Before we do a benchmark and give our final review of the Dell 5440 Latitude, uh, what we need to do is make sure that the computer's quiet. When I say quiet, I'm talking about that the CPU isn't grinding away on something like finishing an install. And so what we'll do is just go into task manager and you can see, okay, it's down to 2%, 4%. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we should also turn off anything that's running that doesn't need to be, including the antivirus. Uh, not that the antivirus isn't important, but it, during a benchmark, it can really screw up the uh, stat. Let's go to user benchmark. All right, so here it says the Intel i5-1335U is running at, uh, yeah, very good. Okay, so that's fine. And you can see here that the graphics card, it says, is very poor here, but that's only because it's being compared to uh, gaming cards. Uh, as far as normal business use things go, by the way, this will play games no problem at all. It just doesn't play the high-end games, first-person shooters and things, at high resolutions and high frame rates, but it'll play all of the normal games, no problem at all. Anyway, it thinks it's okay, performing above expectations. And the drive, it's saying, look, we don't have enough samples of this drive to know how it's performing. But uh, look at the performance in this thing. This is running just fine. And the memory is also running just fine. So what do we think of the Dell Latitude 5440 overall? We love it, it's a great product. Uh, for the price, it's about as good as you're going to get for any corporate laptop compared to HP, Toshiba, well, Toshiba's sort of out of it now. But basically, compared to the big brands, it's as good as it gets uh, for a standard corporate laptop. Now, what's missing from this particular version, as we've mentioned before, only because we cheaped out, it doesn't have the infrared camera, so it can't use Windows Hello, so face recognition. 
that sucks. I really like that. Uh, I really like when we can use that feature, but it didn't want to pay for it. So out it goes. Same thing with the touchscreen. The touchscreen from Dell was just too expensive. Why Dell charges that much for the touchscreens these days? I don't know. It's a bit frustrating in the corporate line. They, they really shouldn't. For any standard corporate user, from CEO down to mailroom clerk, this is going to do just fine. If you want to run high-end games on it or flip it over like a tablet, yeah, it's not going to do that. Hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. And if you like this type of thing, please click uh, subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. It really helps with Google algorithms. You can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because it's YouTube and everybody has an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.